good morning. And good morning to all of you on Facebook that are worshiping with us from home. Please take a few minutes to say hello and greet your fellow online worshipers. Pastor Jay is your official online Facebook greeter today, so take a moment to say good morning to those worshiping online. It is so good to have those of you with us here present today. I am Pastor Emily, one of the two pastors here at First Lutheran Church. And it's a great day for us to worship together. There is one announcement I wanted to bring to your attention. We have sent out in the last couple e-news a survey for faith formation. Some of you have already filled that out. Thank you very much. Others of you, please take a moment when you get home to pull up the survey from the Thursday e-news and fill it out. It takes about two minutes. And let us know what your preferences are for faith formation this fall. We are busily trying to plan something for all ages, and we need to know what your expectations and hopes are for faith formation this fall. Um, as always, please take a look in the e-news. There are more announcements in there and other ways that you can get connected in the life and ministry here at First Lutheran Church. So please now stand for our brief order for confession and forgiveness. Praise and thanks to God, Creator, Lord, and Companion, eternal source of forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Awaken us to the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may receive your forgiveness, confess our sin, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we humbly acknowledge before you and one another that we have turned from your ways and we have struggled with the power of sin by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We turn to you and wish to do better. We trust in your compassion as you promise to forgive us as we renew our promise to follow Christ as our Lord, uphold us by your Spirit, so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. God is rich in mercy, loves us even when we give in to sin, and makes us alive in union with Christ. By grace, we are made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with the power of the Holy Spirit, so faithfulness to Christ may be our guide. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know our thoughts, our weaknesses, our motivations, our sins, and you love us still. Remove from our minds every thought that keeps us from you. Break down the walls, push aside the pride, and help us to trust anew. You know our hearts, and you love us still. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in the service, I want to talk to the littlest among us, the youngest among us. I've got something special that I want you at some point this week to be able to come up to the church and get. Every year, we give you tags to put on your backpacks. 
so that you can have a constant reminder that you are loved and that there is a whole church that is rooting for you, supporting you, loving you when you go through those tough moments in school. And we all know how tough this past year has been. We know that many of you did your school from your bedroom or your kitchen table, that mom or dad or grandma or grandpa was more of your teacher than your teacher. And I know you're completely zoomed out. And I know school is going to be starting again soon. And for many of you, you hope to be in person, wearing a mask, keeping your distance, but being able to be around your friends and your teachers. And so this tag is just a little bit of a reminder that you are loved and you are supported in whatever you do. This tag says, be loved and know that you are. Be kind, be you. Because God created you the way that you are, perfect in every way. So what we want you to remember that. Be loved, be kind, be you. So have one of your grown-ups around you bring you up to church so you can grab these. They'll be outside the front door, entrance A. We hope that you can remember that you are loved by this church. And on the back it says, my bag was blessed at First Lutheran Church. Hopefully this will be a good reminder for you as you begin your school year. Let us pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves, our big feelings, and our backpacks to you. Last year was different from what we expected. We couldn't see our friends or play on playgrounds. We learned at home in masks, six feet apart or both. In all these changes, we may have felt sad and alone. God, our friend who comforts us, hold us close and wipe our tears. In our backpacks, we carry blank pages, sharpened pencils and pointy crayons. And in our hearts, we carry big feelings unanswered questions and hopeful expectations. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, who we might meet, and who we might become. God, our friend, who is always with us, be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride the bus. Be with us as we walk. Be with us as we buckle seat belts, zip up jackets, and tie shoes. However we get there and whatever we wear, bless this journey into something new. And for grown-ups going back to school, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders, and for all they do to help us learn and grow. God, our friend who's full of wonder, fill their hearts and bless their hands. Amen. And I hope to see you when you come get your tag. Ring the doorbell. We'll come out and say hi. Masks, of course. <laughs> hope to see you this week. Now the, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyes had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called for me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. 
And the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Here ends the, here ends the reading. A reading from Psalm 139. Glory to you, o, Lord. o Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not night to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me, my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. 
I come to the end. I am still with you. The good news of God for all people. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I want to tell you about something I experienced when I was a kid. When I was young, I had a mirror on the back of my bedroom door. It was one of those mirrors that went all the way from the top down to the bottom, one of those full-length mirrors. And it's the one that I used for that last check before I ran out the door, right? But I can remember several times sitting on the floor of my bedroom, staring into that mirror at myself. Like, really staring. And I was touching my arms and my legs and my hair and all over my face. I was looking deep into my own eyes. I was sticking out my tongue, squishing up my nose and trying to see the inside of my belly button. And I questioned, how am I alive? I couldn't fathom what it meant to be alive. Seriously, how was I alive? What did alive mean? What did life mean? Who else is out there? Where really was heaven? And what happens to us when we die? All these deep questions being pondered by a preteen sitting on the floor of her bedroom, staring deeply into a mirror. And I wonder if any of you ever did the same. As we get older and go through school, we learn about how life is created and how babies are born. We learn about all the functions of the body and how everything works. We learn that there are 206 bones in the body and that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. (laughs) We learn about things that make us sick and things that will make us well again. And for me, it's hard to deny the existence of God when you've learned about all that stuff. School textbooks and teachers help us to understand how we are made. But Psalm 139 is the text that connects us with our creator. This psalm begins with reminding us as the reader how intimately God knows us. You have searched me and known me. This is deep and profound knowledge of who we are personally. And I'm not talking about that superficial person we are to people we meet every day. But really who we are at the core of our being. God is not a distant observer. But a creator that knows its creation's in the entirety of their existence like no one can. The psalmist continues by saying how God knows what we're going through and what we're going to say before we even say it. Ooh, (laughs) that can be a frightening thought, right? That God knows what we're going to say before we say it. Think about all the bad, harmful, hurtful things we have ever said. And God knew we were going to say it. And God loves us still. We're then told how God is in front of us and behind us. And that too might be a little scary for people. But the psalmist says how wonderful this is to know. Think about it. God is with us wherever we go. Whether it's to our jobs every day or as our kids go to school when we travel to new places, or even in those dark and scary places we sometimes find ourselves, God is already there. And then we get to the section that might just boggle the mind. 
God formed us within our mother's wombs. Yeah, I remember in middle school seeing a video of the dividing cells as they're rapidly becoming an embryo. Probably you did too. How rapidly it divided, creating life. And God was there, overseeing all of that, making sure that there were blue eyes or black hair or dimples or intelligence or athletic ability or dancing skills. But also think about it this way. God created your kidneys, which function to remove toxins from your body to keep you alive. And God made big toes that we stub on furniture in the middle of the night. And God made that pesky sciatic nerve that causes us more pain than we'd like. God created our spines that support our backs and our head, which holds our brain that runs it all. And God created our spleens, but I have no idea what that's for. But God does. And that's what's spectacular. Finally, this psalm ends by describing God's thoughts as numerous as the grains of sand. Have you ever scooped up a clump of sand before? What if I said you had to scoop up a clump of sand and count every grain in that one handful? Could you do it? How long would it take? (laughs) Right? How many grains of sand are in just one scoop? But then think about all the sand on all the beaches in the entire earth. Could you count that? And the psalmist tells us that's how many thoughts God has. Now that's amazing. So what's the big deal about this psalm, and why are we reading it today? Well, this time of the year, it's a perfect reminder how wonderful each person is, especially those who are getting ready to go back to school. This has always been an exciting time. You get new stuff, new clothes, new backpacks, and pencils, and paper. But this year might be a little different, right? Got to get a new mask new bottle of sanitizer, got to figure out what six feet is. This past year has been so challenging for so many among us. And they're about to head back to school, and for some of them, this might be the first time since the pandemic started. We are not God who has known them since before they were born. But many of us have been there for these kids since the moments of their birth. We celebrate with families when kids are born. We put a red rose on this altar. And we rejoice with them when they're baptized, maybe right here at this font in front of us. And when that happened, we made promises that we would support them as they grow. And we say that we're going to be 3A adults for them. We're going to be affirming of them, authentic with them, and available for them. But should we only be 3A adults for those kids that we interact with here at this church? Not at all. We need to be available and affirming and authentic to all children. And the beginning of school is the perfect reminder for us. But how in the world can we be 3A adults for all the children in the world? We can begin with prayer. Pray for our schools. Pray for our teachers. Pray for anyone who will interact with the kids, but especially pray for the kids. And then we can act. I guarantee you there are kids in your neighborhood. Get to know their parents. Find out ways you can support them. It's been a rough year. We are called to nurture all children. 
the ones closest to us and the ones at such a distance we will never see their faces. The God who has known us from the very beginning is the God who has watched us all along. God has seen our comings and goings, our faithfulness and our faithlessness. Yet God has remained present with us. Because God has known us, fully known us. We can trust in God when the world goes awry, like it did this past year. So take some time to celebrate the perfectly imperfect you. Amen. We profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in our service, we give thanks for those who have generously given out of their abundance to support the mission and ministry of First Lutheran Church. We also ask you to go home and clean out your closets and bring us all your old shoes. <laughs> we are collecting shoes through October the 15th. We would ask that you bring them and drop them off at the front door, entrance A. There is a section that says shoes here. So please bring back your shoes to support our shoe drive this year. Rooted in Christ and sustained in the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have searched us and you know us. 
You have made all of creation in each cell of our bodies. You know our thoughts and you know our sins. We thank you and praise you that wherever we go, we can know that you will be there with us. We thank you that you guide us and hold us. We pray for those who may continue to feel alone during this time of pandemic. May they sense your presence with them today. Remind us how we are wonderfully and marvelously made when we forget this. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Creator of the world, we hold before you those threatened with wildfires across the North American continent, across Southeast Europe, and across North Africa. We pray for those who have lost everything, for those who offer everything in the fight to contain them, and for those neighborly souls who support them all. We hold before you those threatened with unseasonable, unexpected heavy rains and floods, and for the multiple rescue agencies who make these their concerns. And we hold before you those threatened with drought, famine, and malnutrition, and for those who respond and give out of their abundance to help others survive. Today, we specifically pray for those in Haiti who are dealing with the after effects of a devastating earthquake. Send them the helpers they need to recover as they continue to grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, all of nature calls you blessed, and so do we. For you have woven an intimate tapestry, called it life, and said that it is good. In love, you have formed a universe so diverse, so related, and into its web you call us forth to walk the land and swim the sea with all our sisters and brothers. To the stars we seem no more than blades of grass, yet to you, each of us, as each blade of grass and each star, is an irreplaceable treasure, an essential companion on this journey of love. Open our hearts to understand the intimate relationship that you have with all creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, our days are filled with too much pain or violence or sorrow that we can see and experience. Some days it seems nearly impossible to see compassion and hope at work in the world. And we know that you charge us to be this compassion and hope. And we do this today by lifting up those who are connected within this community of faith who need our prayers today. We pray for the families of John Armstrong, Keith Peterson, and Ray Wally upon their recent deaths. We also pray for Howard, Rachel, Sam, Ron, Ellen, Sam, David, Julia, Charlene, Wanda, John, Grace, Edgar, Corbin, Susan, Joanne, Bob, Shannon, Kate, Cindy, Will, Judy, John, Sarah, Marilyn. We also lift up people who we know personally by name, either silently or out loud. God of healing, gently touch these lives with your spirit and bring them warmth, comfort, and restoration. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we prepare for communion. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He shared it with all of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection as the foundation of our lives. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and as you take the sacrament, remember, this is the body of Christ that is given for you, and this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Please stand. May the risen presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life-giving love of Almighty God, our Creator, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. It's so wonderful to have you all worshiping with us. Children, make sure you come and get your tags. We want you to remember how loved you are. And now go with Christ and go as Christ to love and serve God's world. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 